Hello guys and welcome. I am Ahmed Adil and this is Coast Engineering Professional. And in this video, we will be talking about critical path method CPM in planning and scheduling. If this is your first time visiting our channel, Coast Engineering Professional releases regular content related to cost estimation, quantity surveying, cost engineering in general, procurement, contracts, uh, planning and scheduling, you name it. So if this is your first time visiting us, please like, subscribe, share, turn on notification, comment, do everything, guys. Interact with us because we love interacting with you. And with this, let's go into the video. All right, guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about critical path method. So in this video, we'll be talking about project and the activity definitions. What is the definition of activity and what is the definition of a project? And we'll talk about the critical path method in planning and the scheduling for sure. And we will explain to you what is actually a critical path. And we will talk about activity early start, early finish, late start, late finish and duration. We will also give you the definition of float or slack and the types of float as well. And we will give you an example on the critical path method like we will not go too much into numbers in this video i am keeping the the how to do it actually in numbers for the next video but this is going to be more of a theoretical uh, video so that we can just get introduced to the concept before we start practicing so first of all what is a project what is the definition of a project the project is a temporary endeavor undertaking to create a unique product or service and it consists of a series of activities that need to be completed to reach a specific outcome. So this is how we define a project. It's a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service. And it consists of a series of activities that needs to be completed in order for this project to be completed. So if you complete all the activities that comes under a project, it means you have completed this project. And this takes us to another question. What is an activity? So it says here, an activity is a scheduled phase in a project with a specific beginning and end. It usually contains several tasks upon completion of which the whole activity is completed. So an activity is like part of the project and the activity consists of smaller tasks and if you finish these tasks, you finish the activity. And if you finish all the activities, you finish the project. So let me give you a small example on the tasks that can come under an activity. Let's say we have in our program an activity called form work for first floor slab. So in order for me to do the form work, this is an activity. It has a start and it has a finish and it has a duration. So in order for me to do this activity, First of all, let's say we need to do one task, which is measuring the levels of the slab and the beam and everything. Then maybe we need to erect the scaffolding. Then maybe we need to put the plywood. So all these are tasks. By the end of putting the plywood, the activity of form work will be completed. And now the next activity can start, which is, for example, steel reinforcement for first floor slab. So after you finish the form work, you can start the activity, which is called steel reinforcement or steel fixing which will also have some tasks under it and so on so the level that we work with on the primavera is the activity level we don't go to the task level because the tasks are smaller portions of the activity we deal with the activity only okay so now what is a critical path method or what is cpm it's a technique where you identify activities that are necessary for a project completion and determine scheduling flexibilities for these activities. So let's say that you will understand that in order for me to build this structure or this building, I need to do 30 or 40 things or 100 things. So these are the activities that are required in order for the project to be completed. And when you schedule them depending on their relationships, then you are using the critical path method which is a technique identify activities that are necessary for a project completion and determine scheduling flexibilities okay so this is the method itself what is the critical path now the critical path in the project is the longest sequence of activities that must be finished on time in order for the entire project 
to be completed on time as well. So it's a sequence of activities that if any of these activities delay by one day, the project completion will be delayed by one day as well. So these activities are critical to be completed on time in order for the overall project to be completed on time. This is called the critical path. So the critical path is the sequence of the critical activities. And what are the critical activities? Are the activities that cannot be delayed by one second. Otherwise, it will delay the project by one second. I hope this is clear, guys. So when we are dealing or using the CPM, any activity in our project will look something like this. So you will have the activity name here. Okay. And let me explain the legend now. What are these things? So for any activity, let's say here I am talking about the steel reinforcement, for example. So the ES refers to the early start. What is the early, earliest date this activity can start? We will go into details of the definitions of each of these, but I just want you to understand that I'll put here the early start and I'll put here the duration and I'll put here the early finish. So early start, duration, and early finish. Down, I'll put the late start and the late finish and something called the float. And now let's see what are these things. First of all, the early start is the earliest date an activity can possibly start based on all its predecessors and successors. What is a predecessor and what is a successor? Actually, if I am talking about one activity and I am talking about the early start of this particular activity, the predecessor is the activity which is before this activity. The successor is the activity that comes after this activity. So, for example, in order for me to do the first floor slab, the concrete works of the first floor slab, I need to have three activities. Let's say that the first activity is form work. So I'll do the form work. This is the first activity. Second activity is a steel reinforcement. I'll put the steel after I do the form work. Third activity, I'll cast the concrete. So by the end of casting the concrete, I've completed the slab or the concrete element that I need to uh, complete. So in that case, the predecessor of the steel, now I am talking about the steel reinforcement. The predecessor of the steel reinforcement is the form work because I'll do the form work first, then I'll do the steel reinforcement. After that, I will cast the concrete, which means that the concrete is the successor. So this is what we mean by predecessor and successor. I hope it's clear. Predecessor is the activity before and successor is the activity after our activity. So the early start is the earliest date an activity can possibly start based on its predecessor and successor. Okay, the early finish, which we were talking here, here, this is the early start and this is the early finish. So what is the early finish? The early finish is the earliest date an activity can possibly finish based on its duration. In other words, early start plus the duration, because here you have the early start, which is, let's say, day one of the month. And you have the duration, which is five days. So the early finish will be day number five of the month. One, two, three, four, five. Five days, because the duration of the activity is five days. If it starts on one, then the duration five, then it will end as early finish on five. So this is the earliest date an activity can possibly finish based on its duration. So early start plus the duration will give you the early finish. Okay, now actually there is a there is a, a confusing point here uh, regarding the early start because sometimes people start from one and some other times people start from zero. So I am telling you from experience when you start from zero is much better like the first activity of the project will start on day zero. So always the early finish is equal to early start plus duration. So zero plus five equal five. This is the best option. Don't use one here. If you use one here, it means one plus five minus one in order to get the early finish. If you are starting with one, it will be one plus the duration five. That's six minus one. It would give you the early finish and you need to continue like that. So 
don't start with one just start with zero say zero plus five equal five and so on so we have discussed the early start and the early finish now let's see what is a late start uh, the latest start is the latest date an activity can possibly start without delaying the next activity so this is the latest start this is the latest date an activity can start and it will also take its duration and it will end by a specific date but the condition is that it will not delay the next activity or it will not delay the project so this is the latest start this is the latest date it can possibly start without delaying the next activity or the project okay what is the late finish similarly it's the latest date an activity can possibly finish without delaying the next activity or without delaying the project all right so early start early finish late start late finish now let's see what is the duration and what is the float here, activity duration is the time required to complete an activity. Very straightforward. I need five days to complete this activity. So that, that's the duration, basically. Now, what is float here? What is this number, the float? The float, they call it sometimes also the slack. Okay. So the definition of float is the amount of time a given activity can be delayed without causing a delay to the subsequent activities or to the project overall completion so this float is the amount of time that the activity can delay and still it will not delay the next activity or the project completion so this is the limitation that i have i have this much of time to be delayed for this activity without delaying the next activity or delaying the end of the project okay we have two types of float. We have something called the free float and we have the total float. So the free float is the amount of time that the activity can delay without delaying the successor, which is the next activity. So this activity, for example, has two days. This activity can delay by two days and still it will not delay the next activity. So these two days is the free float. So the free float is the time the activity can delay without delaying the next activity or without delaying the successor okay the total float is the amount of time that the activity can delay without delaying the project itself without delaying the last activity in the project not not delaying the successor only no delaying the last activity in the project or delaying the project itself so any activity that you have i told you in your project maybe you have 100 200 activities so if you go to one of these activities, you will find for that activity, two numbers are there. You have the free float and you have the total float. The free float is the amount of time that the activity can delay without delaying the next activity. And the total float is the amount of time that the activity can delay without delaying the project itself. Let's see an example now. Uh, actually, guys, if you are uh, liking the video so far, if this is interesting for you, please comment, like and uh, uh, let's discuss let's have some discussion guys i love that i love to interact with you and thank you so much for your time watching but actually since you are here now this is the cpm you are searching you want to learn more about the cpm this is the cpm this is the critical path method and as i said in the beginning of the video we will not go into the numbers now because just i i wanted to show you the theoretical part and we will do in the next video i will show you how to calculate all these numbers and how to do the forward pass and the backward pass and all these things but just for now i want to explain to you what we were discussing right now so let's take for example activity b here activity b the early start is two and the duration is three so the latest start is five okay here somehow in the next video i will show you how to calculate the uh, this is the early start this is the early finish late start and late finish we need to calculate them because we will not have them using the cpm we will calculate the late start and the late finish and we will calculate the float but now it's already solved and every uh, all the numbers are there in front of us so we are just explaining here that early start is two duration is three and early finish is five late start is also two and late finish is five so what does that mean? It means that the total float here is zero. And 
what was the total float? The total float is the amount of time that this activity can delay without delaying the project. So if I have zero float in activity B, it means that if this activity is delayed by one day, it will delay the end of the project by one day. And instead of finishing in 30 days, I'll finish in 31 days. Why? When the float is zero, guys, that means that this activity is a critical activity. It's a, and what is a critical activity or what is the critical path? It's the longest sequence of activities that must be completed on time in order for the project to be completed on time. So the activities on this particular sequence are the critical activities. And always in a critical activity, the float is zero. So as you can see here, I have activity B and the float is zero. Why? Because after I finish activity B, activity C and D and E can start only when activity B is finished. So now, but because activity B will finish on five, so C can finish on, can start on five, D can start on five, E can start on five. If I didn't finish activity B on five, if I finish it on six, then these activities will start only on six. So that means that I am pushing everything forward by one day. So that's why I don't have any flow here. This activity cannot be delayed. Otherwise, it will delay the end or it will delay the completion of the project because it's a critical activity. But let's see activity D, for example. I have five days float here. Why? Because actually this is activity F and in order for activity F to start, activity D and activity C must finish. But activity C will finish on eight and activity D will finish on nine. So activity F anyway will start on nine. So for, for this one, if this activity is delayed, it doesn't matter because this can, it's, it's still activity F is, is can also start at 14 because this is the latest start. So I have until 14 until activity F is, is started. So that's okay if this activity is delayed by six days and that's okay if this activity is delayed by five days. Anyway, they will not delay the end of the project. But let's take a look at the critical path. The critical path is the path where the float is zero. So activity A, B, E, G, H, J, K. These activities here cannot be delayed at all. If you delay them, if you delay any of them by one day, the end of the project is postponed or delayed by one day. So these are the activities that are falling on the critical path, which are the critical activities. So each one of these is a critical activity and this one is the critical path. Now, what we will be discussing in the next video, actually, usually they give you the activity and the activity duration and they give you the successor and the predecessor. And from that schedule or from that table, you have to create the CPM like that. You have to calculate the project duration based the, the full, the completion, the, the full project duration. You have to calculate it and you need to calculate also the early start, early finish and the late start, late finish and the float for all the activities as we are seeing now. This is what we are going to be doing in the next video. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notification, even comment. I love talking to you guys. And you can refer to the description. We have our quantity surveying and cost estimation courses links. If you would like to have a look at them, uh, this will be an honor for me to, to teach you the quantity surveying and the cost estimation and the planning uh, and the scheduling course is coming soon. So be ready and take care of yourselves, take care of your families and stay safe. See you in the next video. Bye bye.